to the cloud. Okay. So this working meeting of the, uh, July 8th, here's our working meeting for the conservation board. We've got, um, Wait, isn't this a regular meeting? This is a regular meeting. I thought. Uh, actually, no, I, we noticed it as a, as a working meeting. It is a regular meeting. Um, but we don't have an agenda. I mean, we don't have a, a, an agenda that we have to vote on or anything so we can down grade it. We're still holding it at our normal time, but we can downgrade it to working meeting, which just means that this recording is the notes and the minutes and we can just be a little bit more free form. Um, you know, Robert's rules can go out the window more or less. Uh, and, and we can just get stuff done. Um, the first thing I'd like to, I, I've just got two housekeeping things before we get started. Um, McCray, your, your tenure is, well, I guess it's July 8th, so you're technically up, but definitely wanted you to come back. Um, yeah. So as a voting board member, I think, and you chose not to reapply um, and instead make space for somebody else and somebody else has applied. Um, and I, I, I did not check before this meeting what the latest status of that was, but I think, I think there's a, there, there's, there's definitely somebody coming on, on board. Um, but I wanted to give you the floor for, for just a minute. Um, so provide any, anything you want to say, any observations, any, um, uh, any, any feedback? I mean, this is on the record, so, you know, uh, no personal attacks until it's off the record. Um, yeah. of course. Uh, but, but no, in, in, in all reality, I think it, it you know, critical feedback is always really important in these. So just um, what do you think? How are we doing? Um, I think we're doing good. Uh, it's kind of amazing how much we've been able to do just like from starting like six months ago. Um, I don't know. It's the first board I've been on, so I don't know what to base it off of, but it's, I don't know. It's been a good experience for sure. Do you feel like this, I mean, such a weird time to be doing this. Do you feel like the, like the Zoom format, is there a way to make it a little bit more engaging for the youth member? Like any, I don't know. Any, I think or, it's, yeah, it's fine. I think I'm doing this off of my phone, so it's super easy to do. I mean, yeah, I don't know what you could do better. It'd be hard to find something to like figure out to do better. That's so awesome. So that's on the record. So if we were to just cut that piece of the video and play at our next Call it. meeting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, uh, thanks, because that's, that's really, you know, as, as the next person comes in, we want to make sure we don't, you know, that we that they're that they get to feel like they're getting something out of it and they're engaged and stuff, right? Yeah. Um, Lexi, I ask a question. Yeah, Lexi. Is is this McCray? Is this um, content or the things that we work on cool enough for youth? You're kind of breaking up. Yeah, try again, Lex. You're breaking yeah. up. I don't know. What oh. about that. Uh, can you hear me now? Mm. Now you're frozen. <laughs> uh oh. She. I know she doesn't have the best internet at her place. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, my video quit. Hold on. Oh boy. <laughs> It's going downhill quick.
Sorry, y'all don't need to see me. I spilled, I uh, was drinking my coffee the other day and I choked on it and spit it all over my computer. <laughs> so there might be some broken pieces right now. <laughs> yeah, so that's good for it. Uh, <laughs> You can send the feedback to the uh, to the to the manufacturer that that doesn't that they're not compatible. Lexi had a just went in the chat there. McCray, is this, yeah. con is this content that we work on cool and interesting enough for the youth? I think it definitely is. It's something that, like, if you if you want to learn anything about like environmental or like energy efficiency. Like you can learn about that and if you're already like you know about it then you can provide like help for other people i don't know you can always broaden your knowledge yeah good yeah Did you ever figure out any recycling stuff at the school um i haven't we obviously haven't had any uh like green initiative or anything for a while now um, but I think next year we're probably going to try to do some composting and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure though. I guess you haven't really had school since March. So there's that. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't even know if we're going back. So. Okay. Yep. An interesting time. Um, cool. Well, thanks, you know, and, and thanks for being on the journey with us. Right. Like, um, uh, oh, I like this, uh, just like, you know, Lexi said, uh, I think in my education, I didn't see or know much impact I could have through government. So I like this. I've mostly seen groups and clubs and nonprofits and maybe the private sector. Um, yeah, thanks. I think, you know, it's just one more tool in the, in the way that our world works right, is having citizen engagement and getting to provide input and, you know, lean heavily on expertise that's in the community as much as you can, basically beg, borrow, and steal for a better tomorrow, that sort of thing. Um, and, and I, I'm, yeah, so cool, thanks. Um, shall we get into it, guys? Uh, Amy, do you want to look at yours first, or do you, or do you, I mean, uh, I, I really feel like the ordinances are more important than personally. Yeah, that's, that's fine. I mean, I, I think, um, sort of the trajectory should be that the or that we, that we understand the ordinance so that we can go and as quickly as possible sort of divvy up and survey the impact. So what I mean by that is um, we have our stated intention on what, you know, that we want to preserve our dark skies. Um, but if we over-specify, and we've said this all before, if we over-specify or we create or we do something that creates, I don't know, six times the cost for, you know, streetlights, then we may have met our preserved dark skies goal, but we've, we've probably done something that's not very dollar efficient, um, uh, which is another thing that we try to conserve. So um, I think it, let's just review the, the ordinance text that Danielle and Lexi have put together. Um, we can actively add comments to it uh, make edits right now if we want to. We have a quorum. And then uh, basically take that and start workshopping it with Northwestern Energy, with, say, Matt at the city, um, just different people to, to get a measure of impact. Uh, and, then, and then also probably reach out to um, Missoula and the Montana Dark Sky Association and just kind of, and just second, you know, check, check again on what they're doing and see how it bounces off of that uh, before we um, move forward on potentially adopting it. Um, 
And that would be using the communication strategy that really was well outlined, Amy, with the stuff that you did. So does that sound pretty good to everybody? Any input on that? Yeah. But what really Lexi and I need is, um, you know, we've put this together and we were talking about adding, just making it a little bit more detailed, con considering the old ordinance was pretty outdated. It had to do a lot with amperes, which amperes no longer indicates how much, how bright your light is. So that yeah. needs to, that language needs to change. And then uh, we've also been talking about zoning, which I put this whole table in the zoning from that IES document, which I thought was, it, it just, it's so nice to have it zoned so that people can know where they're at. And then in rural areas, it should, it should be darker versus city. If we just do like a blanket thing, it makes it so hard to follow. I wonder how, I wonder if we could, <laughs> I don't know how this would all work, but we already have zoning. I wonder if we can take current zoning and um, apply the lighting to that. So instead of creating an overlay for that, we're just using what's already existing. Because most zoning is going to be like, you know, residential, rural, commercial. Um, so basically use the same border that's already there. Yeah. So did you see the did you see the table that's in there? It's it's kind of like zone one or zone zero is basically wildlife areas and parks. And then like, you know, zone one is rural low density, zone two is rural high or rural high density. And then it gets into like super high intensity businesses like industrial zone areas that work 24 seven. Yeah. And I, I, yeah. I, and I like, I, I like the idea. So, so I think, you know, from a, from an ordinance standpoint, uh, the direction that we're going, if we go with this, uh, which I agree with, by the way, uh, is, is that I think Amy, to your point, we have to we have to create some kind of strategy to implement it in the zoning code, and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, an overlay is still required. Okay. As a just as a as the mechanics, so to and this is where the legal thing my understanding of the way the zoning overlays work is you can you can adopt zoning regulations based on different zones that you you obviously that's out on a map right and you you draw the lines on the map and then but typically if you want to create stuff that's kind of way outside of the 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 lane so to speak on what you normally define in a zoning map you, you just create a special overlay um but we could we could make the overlay exactly match the zoning map if, okay. if, that's, yeah that's kind of what i was thinking is like for zone uh i don't know i didn't i don't know off the top of my head but say zone one if you're in residential one or two i've looked at the zoning a little bit um then you know, you are, you fall under lighting zone one. Right. So that it kind of, and maybe those are just recommendations we make and then that actually, I'm not sure how that, like we just put in yeah. there, how do we, and they can adjust it, the city can adjust it, or, you know, as we get public comments, maybe, or maybe we don't go that far. Would that be a Lexi, ask again, would please. Us, like, suggesting, would that be us like suggesting a zoning, more, further zoning, or just adding additional to our thing? Like, how, how much more government expertise help do we need? Yeah, I agree I, with Lexi. Like, this just kind of gives you an idea of where you're at. 
And as it changes, this could be, instead of doing like a strict zoning line, this way as the world changes and as we grow, your zone will change depending on where you're at. Yep. So instead of doing like a lined map, we don't, we don't, I, I don't want to do that. That's just too uh, much. Yeah. We want to make but, this I mean, lasting. Maybe that's how the rules work. Like you'd have to say in city zone thing one and two, they are equal to two in this document. Like maybe you would have to make a, a key. I don't know. I yes, think as long me... as it's, we think it's clear enough that it can be enforceable. And I just, I don't feel like I know enough to know if that's true or not um, based on like the language. I mean, it does have a lot of examples which helps, but there's always going to be weird exceptions that it's going to be hard to tell what zone they're supposed to be in and then who decides and. Well, that's, that's why I think. I mean, is there anyone? Yeah. Go ahead. Do you know anyone that does some zoning that might have some input? Like, what if there was like some example, like, hey, if you see a fire hydrant, then you know you're in zone two. Just making stuff up. Well, this, I mean, so you got, I'm sure you all can see my screen. Like I, this is the zoning map. Yeah. So, you know. Well, I mean, I mean, it's another reason to maybe just not even do zone, a zoning idea. It was just a good, it was an idea from that IES to make it more. Well, I mean, as Danielle and I looked at it, it seems really much more complicated to try and do it without zoning. Like the zoning makes the rules a lot easier and clearer. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I think I think so too. I think it clearly lays it out and maybe we're getting too far detailed with it right now. No, no, we're not, Amy. Actually, <laughs> this is... No, I mean, and I, I mean that because like that, like we're here to get stuff done, right? So, you know, the question is, do any of us have a problem with chasing? Like we can go do the research with how to implement this in, in zoning code, you know, like, I mean, this, remember, all we have to do is make a recommendation to the commission. My wife is on the zoning commission like I like I can I can go and ask um, you know J Jim Berg hey what's the like how would you recommend implementing something like this if we wanted to do a zoning overlay if we just wanted to put language in the in in the in the dark sky ordinance that matches um, their zones to the dark sky zones, we could do that. Uh, we probably need to do both where the zoning commission recommends that the city commission implement a zoning overlay that officially overlays our dark sky ordinance onto the map. But if we, so that's the implementation side, we can get through all that. The real question is right now though, does anybody see a problem with taking that approach because I, I'd like to know directionally where we as a team would like to go. Is, is I don't that see a problem with that because the zoning commission changes the zones as we grow. And so if it's tied to that, then this document will continue to be relevant. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I that's a really good point, Danielle. I if the zoning commission's like on like if they had to recommend something too, then both teams are working toward the same goal and it will continue to work. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. 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 So, so maybe then if, if we're okay with that approach, then I think what we do is we, we take this zone list, right? Which is R1, R2, R2. Uh, I forget what the MH stands for. R3. Um, uh, Central Business District, uh, I forget our, what that is. We've got um, Highway Commercial, something commercial, I forget what the A stands for. Yeah, I mean, these all have, there's, there's a 
There's a Rosetta Stone somewhere for these. And the, then the question is, can we map our zones to these residential zones? Um, that would be I, the smartest and easiest thing for us to do. Right. And like you said, it, it'll track when they change zoning, which is important. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then I, I, the only thing I'd say is, uh, and this is just a note we need to take, is in, <clears throat> in our ordinance, we need to designate that the zoning commission, uh, if they create any new zones or new zone types, mm that that they they are required to identify as part of that process they're quite required to identify what lighting ordinance zone that's in michael do you have a map like this that explains what r1 r2 rmo if you can you have... look it up online under the zoning um ordinance basically that's where I've, they have a table with that all listed yeah Whoever can get it fast enough or fastest, I think I'm I'm working on that because I think I think that actually could be a, a really good output for today is what's our recommended list of since we're all able to talk about this together. We can just go through this list. I mean, I would feel great if we came out of today with that zone mapping because then we could move that piece along. Right. Um, um. Uh, in addition, I was hoping that people saw my email from the other day and that we could address one of the topics I included. I saw your email. Yeah, well, I see. I saw Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Which you will, you know. <laughs> I read it too, but did you say you have a specific topic? I'm not. I'm just saying, talking about the poll. Oh, okay. Yeah, I read that. It looked good. I, I added one comment of just defining what the dark sky is before you ask questions mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. Just because well, we I don't can think... talk more about it later because yeah. we need to talk about like the logistics. Yeah. So, well, I talked to Jonathan yesterday. Not yesterday, like a week ago. <laughs> My timeline's all messed up. Uh, and he said that if we got him the questions, he would find a way to get him out. Yeah, um, surprise okay. or he, he said he'd figure it out. I just put the Did link you... for the zoning in the chat. Thanks. And if you go to Daniel, did you ask him if you wanted to like weigh in? Yeah, I asked to overview the questions. questions too and see what he thought. Okay, cool. Yeah. But I haven't heard back from him and I don't know how busy he is, so. All right, zoning. Thank you for that, Amy. Yep. If you go to 3030, there's a table. Mm. Tables are so helpful. Oh, and then below are all the, okay. Definitions. I know I had a PDF of it. I was like, motel, yada, yada, zoning districts. Okay, so R1, right. So, yeah, that designation low residential density. So, low density residential is R1, medium density residential is R2. Mobile home R2 is a separate class. So it's the same, probably the same, it's like the same density stuff with, but it's got a provision that allows mobile homes, which are not allowed in R2. Um, R3 is essentially taller and denser. Um, so, I mean, in all generality, we should just put the residential in one zone for lighting. According to IES, it's really 
it really comes down to like public lands where it's being reserved or preserves um, versus residential versus commercial versus industrial. So what do you have a suggestion? Michael, on what if you, yeah. What if you tried to do split screen and showed us the lighting zones and these at the same time? Because that would make sense. Why would I do that? I don't know. Get it together. <laughs> All right. All right. These are asking for clarity. I suppose I can create. It looks like most of our residential should be in zone one. There might be a few areas in zone zero that are just like way out there. Okay, so here's... Yeah. So I guess we're a city. It's not even, nothing's going to be way out there. Well, yeah. So like if you look at, so here's the map, right? So R1 is, you know, the big swaths of stuff that's out there. Um, excuse me. Uh, out past like, you know, like there's the, you know, just across the bridge from the, the city and the water treatment plant and all that. Um, getting out towards the hospital, which is all light, zone light industrial and, um, and then when you look at like areas that, you know, Livingston might expand, that's, they've, they've been identifying different areas and that's one of them. So. Where's green? Say that again, Lexi. That green acres is that that mustard orangey? Uh, yeah. To the left? Kind of, if you see or where my the, oh. if you see where yeah. my cursor is, it's it's that array of streets that's that's being kind of circled there. So that's that's in the you know obviously in the um, it's being annexed. So I, I mean the real I think the real question getting back to Danielle's suggestion is based on our lighting zone options that we have, um, well, one, okay, so the first question is, do we apply zone zero to R1? Meaning, I don't, I don't I, think the, the only comment I have is when I did the, when I helped with some of the lighting surveys up in, uh, up the the north side of town or something and some of those streets with the galaxy names um and those bigger houses didn't really have many lights and sometimes they only had like their personal one but obviously that's nothing to do with whether they're allowed it's just what is the fact right now the problem with r1 being zero is that it's not really it goes all the way downtown where there are still street lights. <laughs> so that doesn't work very well. Yeah, and the definition of your zone, of the zone zero does not include residential. So that, I mean, if we're going off, it's Yeah, it says wilderness areas. So I like guess R1 is like over by, R1's like over by the river. Yeah. It, it's, it's Maybe not like around. So there's the park with the river or like the island with, Ninth Street Island over by the river over there. Ninth Street Island isn't in our, uh, isn't in the city, I don't think. But oh, okay. I mean, the R1 zoning is still residential. And if you go to the lighting, that falls yeah. under zone one. Yeah. Okay. Zone I mean, zero I... is like wilderness. So maybe like if we ended up having park spaces somewhere. But I don't even, I don't think that the r river counts because that's so residential, but like in the future. Yeah, whatever's so purple should be so zero. Is park, so would, yeah, would zero go with P? Yeah. Well, but maybe. there is lights around some of those parks up on the north side of town, too. I mean, the way I'm reading this, it sounds more wild, zone zero. Yeah, it's so wilderness. I feel you. Maybe it's like where we don't have zones. Those are zero. I mean, we don't necessarily have to use like, all the zones. I think it's good to present yeah. all of them. So if in the future we need it, it's there. But that doesn't mean we have to use it. 
with our current zone. Yeah, if they acquire land that happens to be reserved as a wilderness sanctuary and they don't build on it, yeah. then it'll be R0. Or, yeah. I think that's a great idea. And we don't, need to, we don't need to have more than three zones. And then if we have three zones, we only need to do lighting research on like lumens for three zones. We meaning Danielle, because she's the right. expert. So three zones sounds great. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Okay. So are we moving on to lighting zone one then? Are we over zero? I think so. I Well, yeah. So the other thing that we could do, I'm just kind of, because I, uh, so the P, you know, the preservation district is interesting, right? So that's, um, that mean. you know, like Sacagawea Park, the, the whole, um, like all the baseball fields and the Civic Center and all that behind them. Um, my public use in order to preserve and provide adequate land for a variety of community facilities, which serve the public health, safety, and general work. Well, I mean, and these are just literally guidelines. We can make whatever whatever we want. Right. So, so, so I think I, you know, I, I think the peas are that that's going to be kind of an interesting one because there's very different use cases in all the different areas. Like some are parks, some are like a water treatment plant, you know, some are baseball fields, and yeah. and we we want to be able to provide some lighting guidelines for those areas. Um, but frankly, I don't, I don't see any of these zones. These are, that's kind of, that's one of the problem areas. I think that's where we're going to have sort of round peg square hole. With well, we just say well, some rural communities may choose to adopt LZ zone one for residential areas, which would make right. sense for the residential areas that are, you know, out by Green Acres, even though, I mean, I know Green Acres is in the city, but up on the hill or. Maybe the Green star Acres zone. isn't the city now. But yeah, I think most of those parks have enough public use that they would be like residential. I think it's really weird that a wastewater treatment plant is under the public thing. But I mean, they're all so close to residential areas that I don't think you would put them into zero ever because no. people are using them frequently that you, they kind of need lights for use and safety. Etc. Yeah, and and but you know as and then also as a like I can tell you that you know my house is over on the lagoon, right? So we can see across at the Civic Center and stuff like that. That area, when they turned off about half the street lights there, it made a dramatic difference on the stars that you could see. Uh, and and it didn't it didn't change the usage. It didn't change much. So there's there's opportunity. I think so that's just a a really interesting example to me of where you have these public use spaces that may have some they may need some special attention. But let's move on because I, I we definitely want to just make some decisions here. And I think we're in the interesting part, which is LZ one which typically includes single family, um, two family residential communities. This feels like it basically oh. applies to all R1 and R2 in our community. I would, I feel I would like it's the entire time. all residential. <laughs> <laughs> like can that's- you scroll to the right a little bit so I can see what they recommend for the IES thing? To the right, not to the bottom. I mean, yeah, and that's the description there. It pretty much says residential. Oh, and in yeah, LZ1 pertains. So it says recommended default zone for rural, rural low go. density residential. Um, I feel like that's our whole town. I mean, I don't, I don't think it applies to R3. No, R3 is where even is R3? It looks like a it's few apartment buildings in town. Yeah. Well, and that's what I'm thinking. They're pretty small. Like, why did they need more lighting? 
Is it just because they're like... Yeah, and they also, again, are like surrounded by the other ones. So like, it's, I mean, they're all, I, yeah, I don't think they're very different from each other. You don't have like yeah. giant blocks and blocks of, in row of apartment buildings. Except across from the river. It's kind of weird. That must have been just zoned that way to... Is that not the... Wait, where am I? <laughs> I don't know where that is. I, it, I mean, I think zone two is basically, or zone one is basically all residential. The R3s look like they're just in normal areas, especially down by Albertsons, that R3 area. They're putting in those condos there, which is probably why it got zoned that way. Yeah. Probably lobbied to get zoned that way, but I, we still don't I mean, want a bunch of light in that area. Exactly. I'm like, do they need I agree. increased lighting because they're bigger buildings? I'd argue that based on what I've read, no. And they're only two-story condos. They're not like these huge apartment complexes that cities have. I just don't well, know. Well, and if, if we happen. were to not give them R1, we'd give them R2. And what does it say? Recommended for commercial business district and high density mixed use. Not well, some of them are mixed use. They're still not even that high density because they're maximum like two or three stories. So they're still pretty low. Yeah. That's so true. I agree that they the lighting zones are written for like anybody to come in and use them. <laughs> Whereas we're like yeah. tiny and small, so our zones are like a lot different than what you'd see in a bigger city um, as far and as like density. we probably found this conversation to in r2 it says um churches schools neighborhoods I, I feel the same way that all those things are surrounded by residential and so therefore they should all be lumped in with residential yeah i vote for all residential in zone one for mm -hmm. now i mean we might get comments on that and things we haven't thought about, but. So, yeah, once we move forward and we figure out like what that actually means and like, I guess what lumens, then that'll have, be the opportunity for where someone can say that's not enough. And we can like really question with numbers, whether it is, I guess, rather than with words. Let me, uh, what, what's, yeah, so uh, let's let's take stock of what's what's been said, so that we have some some direction. So I think we what I've heard the most from people so far is R one R two should be lighting zone one. Um, that sounds so R one R one R two and R2 mobile home should be lighting zone one. R3, does everyone agree should be lighting zone two? It's- No, no. No, well, I mean this- All residents are lighting zone one. And well, so R, just- Yeah, can you be like- R on the map? Yeah, just, just to track what R3 is though, right? I just want to make sure we give that the intention of the, of the, which of course we can change, the, but the intention of lighting zone two is for multifamily residential. And R3 in our community is absolutely where apartment buildings and other, more like higher density development is. The other, the other thing to consider is what, what's zoning used for? So zoning, one, one use of zoning is for a city to apply zones to their community to give signals to developers what kind of development they want to see in different areas. And so if we say all residential, if, so if we say R3 also has to hit lighting zone one, R3 is intended to include things like high rise residential. Do we think that lighting zone one is appropriate 
for high rise residential it, because that's what R3 is permitting. And, and I would, I would argue no. So if we're having to, if we're having to attach lighting zones to the zoning classifications that we have today, I, I would tend to think that R3 should be lighting zone too. Cause, cause you have to think about what's the most permissive use of that zone. Yeah, Lexi. So uh, I'm, I'm studying for the lead exam right now. And there's a difference between low, the low rise multifamily and high rise and low rise is like three stories or below. And then the rest is like all the way up to seven or 10 or whatever. And I feel like that might be helpful because I can think of like toward the bottom South town, like by Robertson's, like one of those hotels that they're building is maybe going to be like four or five stories. That's the only thing that I can think of. That's really, um, high rise, not necessarily high. I just, I think there's a difference between high density and high rise, low rise. That's what I'm getting at. Though I get what, um, Michael's saying, if you read, um, zone one of lighting, it says includes residential single or two family. That's pretty specific to a duplex or a single family home. And then if you go to this other one, they just say multifamily. So that, you know, would be anything over two. Yeah. So if we're going to stick to just, what they say, then R3 would go in zone two for the lighting. I didn't read that side that closely, so. This R3, if you look at our zoning map, R3 does include areas where we have a lot of commercial. It's like right around the commercial area anyways. So it's kind of bridging the gap between commercial and residential. And also I'm assuming it's increased because you just have so many more people coming and going. Yeah. So it's probably a use and a potentially a safety thing. So I guess it depends on how like conservative we feel like being. <laughs> well, for some reason, people- I know, cause I almost wanna like disregard it and say that our town is small and slightly, slightly more rural, I guess, and spread out. So, but, and I wanna ignore their um, suggestions, <laughs> but. I, don't know. I guess we don't, I don't actually know what the difference is in lighting between zone one and zone two either. So. Yeah, right now we're, right now we're defining zones based on the, the, the recommended, essentially this, this, uh, this guide here. Right. Um, and I, I think, I, I think we should stay there. So what if, uh, by the way, Lexi, good input. I think, I think it is important to, to consider that more restrictive lighting zones mean just less light. Um, I, it is hard, I will say it is hard for me to read the description for lighting zone two and not read, oh, that's R3. That's really, it's, that's really hard for me to see that. And I would, I think that, uh, I think that we should um, maybe as a, as a path forward, I suggest that we, we say R1, R2, and R2 HC, or whatever that is, are lighting zone one. R3 is lighting zone two, but we have an intention to see if, if zone one is is feasible to apply because I think that does serve our main goal better, which is to preserve our dark skies. But it, it's, it's, I, I personally, this, and again, we're not voting or doing any of that stuff right now, but I personally feel uncomfortable saying that R3 is going to be LZ1 because that's, that's what we're implying we're going to do if, because it, I'd have to see really get into this a little bit more, which is which is what we're going to be doing. But I I think 
if it's okay tentatively for now let's just so that we can keep moving yeah i'd very much like to just let's just say r3 lz2 with intention to evaluate lz1 um and and another another thing that seems relevant right now is we can map so if we use a zoning overlay as a as the as the uh, the the tool for this the the legal tool, then we can map these lighting zones to the zones that are defined in the city, but we can also then create a special overlay where certain areas are treated differently than their than the way that they're actually zoned. Um, it, if that becomes, I mean, we can basically cherry pick buildings if we need to, right? I mean, well, that, that's, that's, that's kind of what I was thinking for the P, I forget, the public. I mean, we could just say that those ones are on a case by case basis based on where they're located and what their use is. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the city would be into that, but. <laughs> well, um, yeah, we got to make sure we don't have any. Look, so anything that requires maintenance should be treated with deep suspect, meaning like if it, like if new P zones come up and we're not here anymore, are we giving whoever the, and it's not, may not even be the conservation board, really, are we giving the zoning commission enough information or is there a default position for P, you know, that, that they can, that they can look at, right? Yeah, I mean, I think it's possible that we could come up with some like examples, I guess like for any P areas that have, I mean, in good weather have like frequent daily use places like the tennis courts and the whatever else versus like places, look, hiking or outdoor adventure places. I don't know how to word that nicely. <laughs> I, I feel you that it's, um, we should make it easy to move forward, but I think that we might be able to have come up with some text that would help. Well, I, I mean, for today, I think it'd be nice just to give me an idea of what we want to zone, and then I can go through and see what lumens that we, you know, foot, uh, foot candles, lumens, whatever. Yeah. yeah, I like that, Daniel. And then we can come here and decide. Yeah, and then you, yeah. and then we can change it. <laughs> I mean, we can, and, and we can, you know, we can take our zoning map here and literally draw arrows to different things and say, hey, we think that the ball fields should be zoned with LZ, you I mean, know, whatever. Or two. I mean, it, it's, it, we, we can, it, we have the zoning map, so we can create this as we wish. Right now, I think, as Danielle, as you said, we're, we're trying to create this guideline so that you know, like, I, so I'll take the action to go talk to Jim Berg and say, okay, what's our, and, and uh, we, we will need to talk to the, the city on what's, what's our, uh, what's the, what's the, what's the term I'm looking for? What is the regulation that we're going to use? Are we going to use an overlay, that sort of thing? And then once they start asking, I'll say, yeah, we have a tentative zone mapping, but we haven't like block by block fine toothed it yet. But we know we know generally what light lighting zone is to, to what zone is. Which so if it's okay, let's 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 try to keep pounding that out with so so what I've heard is so maybe if it's okay, maybe R1, R2 is LZ1. Uh, R3 is LZ2. I heard the public space, actually, I think uh, the P. Um, I think that falls under two for most yeah, of the Yeah, maybe, the maybe. Can I have a quick comment on P? Yeah. Um, in the lighting ordinance as it is already and in all the edits, coming forward um they have things notes about 
events and stuff like that the lights have to be turned off by 11 p.m and like things like the arena at the fairgrounds or like the baseball field if an event is actually happening there I think you have like an exception you, you aren't really like in a zone anymore because you're at a special event so I feel like we should keep that in mind like don't think that you have to give them really high lights because events are different than like every day is, I think. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I would actually suggest, um, I, I would suggest LZ1 for all P. Yeah, and then events are a whole different, events yeah. are, there's like exceptions yeah. and, and that, there's a bunch yeah, of that's already written. I mean, most, like, Parks are used in the daytime, and then yeah, like, and it, if it's yeah. at yeah. nighttime, it's an event. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, so, so that sounds pretty good. Um, okay, so so moving along, it, that's okay. Let's just let's just run with that piece. Um, I like that. Uh, RMO. I think that's still residential. It's just. Is it? What is it? Yeah, it's the mobile home. It doesn't even okay. say it's necessarily dense, so I feel like it could be one. Yep, that's what I think too. Okay. Okay. I so mean, are, yeah, yeah, they are kind of dense. But they are. I don't know. I, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're yeah. residential though. They, like, uh, they're, they're no different than yeah. than okay. the others in terms of like lighting needs. So RMO would be yeah. LZ one. The okay, so this is where it gets fun. The central business district. Yeah. So that's the that's that's the the grid of five blocks, uh, uh, east west, and five blocks north south. That really is our downtown. So. I think that's three. I mean, it lists town centers, which is the best description I can see under here. Yeah. That's definitely the key. next one, number four, is not a default and includes high intensity businesses or in industry. And I don't think I would call any of them high intensity, like a club. No, no that's more like um, where, you know, like not warehouses, but like industrial type. Times Square. Times Square. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, that is high intensity. I think a three could be high. Highway Commercial and Central Business District. Yeah. Okay. So like industrial. So actually, like industrial. Well, well, light industrial? industrial. We do have light industrial out at PFL currently. Um, although I think that got this is the 20, 2014 What's that? map. Light What's industrial that? is like PFL, you, and then kind of over by. You know the town. The animal shelter. Oh, yeah. so the only ones we have are the hospital and the animal shelter under LI? No, PFL as well. But but I think they just got rezoned to Highway Commercial. What's uh, PFL? I'd have, to go, I'd have to go check. It's our like one big, oh. one big thing here. We're, we're doing so many acronyms here that I'm like, what district is PFL? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, it's not on the map. Um, so, so the the idea. So light industrial. Um, uh, so, so actually, let's let's address highway commercial because I think that's, to okay. me personally, highway commercial is, is the one that's just, I don't know, um, because it's there just, is there, like highway commercial can create a lot of light. Right. These this these are the gas stations. It's all of Park Street. That's yeah. kind of crazy. Yeah, all the way down. Oh. Um it's it's all of these buildings, it's all of this stuff, right? And it's and so if we assign it's interesting because like I think that I, I guess LZ three. I think three. But yeah. I feel like a lot of Park Street, in my head, should be like the downtown, the CBD. That's you know what I, what I mean? mean? Like all those shops. But then as I'm riding my bike down north, it does kind of start to be like industry looking and like 
things I can't necessarily walk in and shop at. But like, I don't know. If, if we made it three, then it would be like, you deserve more light because you're next to crazy highway and trains. Like, I don't. But why do they need more light? As long as you can see what it is. Yeah. Like, if you're, like you said, biking down that at night or at night, I would be like, you know, there's too many lights on. <laughs> Um, yeah, I I think I think maybe where we where we address this is maybe we don't jump too much out of out of our lane. We stick to what you pointed out, which is let's you know let's do LZ three for highway commercial. But 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 let's take a really close look at what both street lighting, which is always on, like what are how are we going to specify that. And then how do we specify business lighting? I mean, downcast 2700K lighting looks very different, even if there's a lot of it, than, you know, like, for example, I mean, I, you go look, at, go look at Main Street at night right now. It's, it's like most of that light from all of those high intensity LED fixtures is going into the night sky. Mm. Um, and I, by the way, they, they look fine. I'm not saying that, I mean, like, that's no, that's no dig on, I think Matt who specified it, like <laughs> they're doing their best, but you know, the reality is I think we really missed with those. I, they're, they're, they're really not, I, I, I really don't think they're very compatible with our vision for a dark sky community. Um, I would hate to see that happen down Park Street and, and also Park Street's probably where a lot of these light replacements are gonna be really visible and really relevant. So I, I maybe what I would recommend is maybe we say LZ3 for the CBD and for highway commercial I think it'd be nice to make highway commercial lighting zone two and get all those hotels to turn down their lighting. I, I mean, if you go to Bozeman, I think that Bozeman is all, they're all like L2. They're not, they're not messing around. <laughs> so you've got to, especially in the. I want to see their map of lighting zones then. Yeah, they're not. I mean, it says, it says hotels and motels here for LZ2. Mm -hmm, and that's highway I mean, commercial. We could maybe what we could do is say L, default LZ2 for highway commercial and then create an LZ3 special overlay. Where I think that there's a big difference between Park Street and once I go south and I start to curve and I get to the gas stations and Albertsons and stuff and hotels. I think there's a big difference in like what type of environment that is. Like those start to look like like suburban and kind of not dense and old buildings. I agree. It's also going to be where there's going to potential growth. So we have to think forward. Yeah. To, and if we want to make sure that businesses going in are less lighted than we should think about that now. Yeah, if resident, like if behind Albertsons and all that area, if yeah. that's going to continue developing, then it then all that highway commercial is going to be really close to residential, so it shouldn't be overly lit. And it's not like it's freaking a different highway that I could mention that you guys don't like. It's not a freaking four lane highway, you know. It's a, it's a road in town that was a highway and then I almost think that since we're in the middle of nowhere we're we're a very rural city we should stop at lighting zone two that's what I was thinking I was like well it sounds like we just put all of it in lighting zone two like all the big lighted yeah. stuff we're trying to put in lighting zone two so maybe we just I mean we don't have any town centers or high intensity suburban commercial areas or we don't have well, any. And do we have any industry that's like 24 hours? Just the logging company. Does printing have a closing time? Are they working 24 hours? 
the hotels and the logging. Well, industrial is going to be the only industrial I know that's 24 hours is the logger, the logging place. In the rail yard. That's what I meant. Whatever it's called. Well, we have the logging place uh, and the rail yard. Yeah. And that's two different things. <laughs> We're like they both use the railroad, but. <laughs> Spring for less closes at a time. What does? Closes at six. Spring for less. Okay. They so, have an opening and closing time. They're not twenty-four-seven. Yeah. Let's. So, uh, Danielle, I want to be respectful of your time. You said you had to leave. Um, yeah. I mean, my ride's not here, so it's not like I, I can stay till he gets here. <laughs> okay. And 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 Bill just joined us. Hi, Bill. Hello. Hello. Thanks for yeah, thanks for joining in. I appreciate. I know we're so you, you caught us like right in the middle of a colorful picture. <laughs> a colorful picture. That's right. So what we've what we've been doing is taking this um, the working document that um, uh, both Danielle and Lexi have put a lot of time into to to try to uh, create these. Uh, sort of the recommended approach, which is doing l lighting zones. Okay, I have read through this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then, and then what we've been trying to do is overlay the lighting zones onto the current zoning classification in the city, and 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 figure out what sort of our recommendation, our initial recommendation is for for mapping. And if it's if it's achievable to directly map lighting zones to zoning zones, <laughs> um, uh, and and then if so, what would those zones be? So what we've landed on so far uh, is that R uh, R one R two anything like that would be a, a lighting zone one. Um, R3 would be lighting zone two, uh, 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 RMO would be lighting zone one, uh, highway commercial and central business district would actually be lighting zone two. We kind of decided to not go higher than lighting zone two. Yeah. That yeah, I think as I look at every other zone that we have on the city zoning, nothing like nothing is a business zone district commercial mixed use. What is it like highly used whatever for number three? Nothing fits into that heavy industrial. We have industrial real, but I wouldn't call it heavy. The the rail yard. I mean, I I mean, I live right near the railroad. Well, I guess we all do in one way or another, but um. It doesn't seem like they have a lot of lights on ever anyway. So that would be my only concern is if, yeah. if, if an industry needed the light and we were restricting them on it. Um, the only but, area that I think is lighting zone three is going to be by Albertsons and all that. Yeah, but all the like 8,000 hotels. I feel like I don't think they the even only, need it though. I feel like the only way they could get at three is if they're like going to injure themselves in industry if they don't have a bajillion lights on them like at a mill or something you know or the uh, rail yards uh, lexi what about a gas station i guess for the giant trucks that come to have to fill it up but they're really bright and that's our gas stations are generally zoned highway commercial i think or like yeah. the one up on the highway yeah i, I don't only okay, exception we can make like gas stations for the south part of highway commercial because they might yeah that might be a case by case for right now well what it sounds like is that we're saying along i-90 where you get on and off the businesses there may need more lighting but this highway commercial that goes through town we do not want at that level so that might be where we need to split up that one zone yeah like all oh, park street and also i'm thinking about town pump goes or town whatever yeah, if i just was going on the highway and i just got off versus me leisurely going 15 miles an hour on park it's a lot different 
So that's why we have that exception section, you know, just like yeah. exceptions for gaming, exceptions for. Right. I, yeah, I like I like that, Danielle. I think so. So in terms of zone tracking, I think maybe it's it's appropriate to say highway commercial. I mean, it, having two lighting zones is really convenient. Uh, yeah. it, it's it's simpler. But then if you're in we the are residential gonna, area, you keep your lights lower. If you're that's commercial, right. you can go a little higher. And then the 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 P, you know, the 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 P land would be so public land would be L Z one. So it would be actually the lower one. And then and then the 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 highway commercial is the one where maybe we need to create and this is it's becoming obvious to me we have to have a zoning overlay. Like I there's no way that we're gonna be able to match perfectly yeah perfectly with with what the the zoning map looks like but i but I think now i really like danielle what danielle said when having exceptions like yeah. what if there was an exception that said gas stations and train yard rail yards like those are two really easy things that like they can have higher lighting if they want really want it mm -hmm. except what about the gas stations in town that are like next to someone's house so i actually don't know where they are there's only one. Oh, there's, <laughs> there's, two. there's two there's two and there's... i think they're over lighted like someone was even unrelated to this was commenting on how bright the lights are at that one at like main street and park EJ. but it's like ridiculously lighted. well yeah i mean i mean gas stations typically yeah. have the highest one of the highest lighting uh loads i i would say okay uh, but their lighting know. can be high but they still have to follow the rules because the rules are going to say that if you are r1 right next to you which they will be when they're on park not r1 they're going to be zone one next to them they have to like figure out how much um trespass yeah, they, they have trespass. and make sure they don't so it matters what zone you're next to because you can't screw them over if they're different from you, you know? So it'll be okay. So maybe maybe directionally then, so that we're not too stuck, uh, maybe directionally we say highway commercial and industrial are LZ2, but we're gonna create an LZ3 exception bucket that's going to be its own special overlay. And that, that has to, that's an opt-in exception bucket, not a, meaning the, the, the commission has to grant special disposition to be in that lighting zone bucket, not, that's not the default. Your default is LZ2, even if you're HC. Mm -hmm. So that's the more restrictive approach for both HC and industrial and the CBD. Mm -hmm. But it, it's, I'd say it's a, it, it's probably a reasonable approach. I think, you know, this is probably going to be one of the central questions for the public, which is do you want businesses that are coming in to have to come and ask for permission to 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 do a little more light um is is that is that something that's uh that's palpable for people yeah i think that sounds good and then i i think though if we are if we are going to recommend an LZ2 for industrial, which includes the rail yard, I think as part of our outreach, we've got to talk to MRL. Because yeah, yeah, we need to understand what their needs are. But I, I just don't feel like they actually have a lot of lights on, but I think it's because they only use part of those buildings. I haven't right. There's not that many like humans. It's just the trains coming through with the humans on it. But I, yeah, and I, I suspect that that's something that I mean they'll be they'll look at this with a lot of interest. Um, 
especially actually, Lexi, to your point, I mean, they border, a lot of their land borders residential too. So they, they would be subject to some of that trespass uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, they, there's no question that their position is going to be to be more permissive. I mean, let's let's be honest. Who wouldn't take that permission, that that position to start with? Um, so I think we we'll have to really understand what the impact is going to be, and if that's something that we think the community feels really strongly about. Um, I but think it, it's not yeah. that bad for them because, like, I've ridden my bike to the wastewater treatment plant before, and I feel like when I'm looking at the zoning map, it's not like the building ends at the edge. You know what I mean? Like they have so much extra just grass that's doing nothing that a light doesn't need to be at the edge. So I feel like it shouldn't be that hard to, and then you have Park Street, which is pretty big. So I just don't think it would be that hard to make sure you don't trespass into the next zone from where their lights would actually be and like where they actually have people working out of those. But again, and, and then again, even if that does seem like it's not going to work for them, we can still have the default with industrial be LZ2 and then rec recommend to the city commission that they create a special overlay that, that gives them LZ3 if if that's something that we have that we feel like we just have to do to accommodate what they have going on um and that that's another that's the other i mean that's the option for the highway stuff that we were discussing as well mm -hmm. so i i think this is great i think we we have a really good directional notion of of where some of those hiccups are be, could be now we we do need to go and take that these lz districts and see if see how that's actually going to work in the municipal code and if this overlay approach is is viable and every and, you know have everyone kick the tires at the zoning commission and everywhere else to see that 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 is a valid approach because any zoning overlay will need their buy-in. I mean, they will need to recommend that 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 this zoning overlay get implemented because it's it it is zoning code. Um, which we, means, yeah. I was just gonna say we missed one neighborhood commercial. Doesn't really look like there's a lot happening there. I vote for putting it in residential. <laughs> yeah. Sure. It looks like it's basically yeah, not is it? <laughs> What it, is that one little chunk? I um, there's a bunch of like automotive type shops right there and like things that aren't open at night, like Repair. bowling alleys there. That's probably the only thing that's open at night. Um, oh. Along Front Street. Yeah. It's like appliance repair, blah, um, blah, 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 stuff. But it is all surrounded me. by residential. So I think they're probably even meeting. Is the bowling alley open very late? Is it a party spot? Uh, the bowling alley is the only thing that I know of that would be like where people go at night. Bowling alley is an industrial. Okay. Oh, it is. Okay. And uh, oh, that's probably what weird. all that talking about is an industrial. So I don't even know what that is then. I'd have to look at a. But either way, I mean, neighborhood commercial. Oh, means you mean you mean the little a, the little thing back there? No, I um, meant to the left front strip. Oh, that strip. Yeah, that's where those, um, yeah, that's where there's a bunch of warehouses and some other stuff. Uh, they're just, yeah, th those, L those are totally LZ1. Totally. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like not even really anything. It looks like it's four buildings. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know a couple of people have businesses there. It's, it's totally LZ1. Absolutely. Um, hey, I Michael, go. I think Danielle is already writing this down, just to let you know. Danielle, do you have to go? Is that what you said? Yeah, so I can do a, 
Whatever you guys decide, if you want to put it in the working document, like I started writing all the zones that we decided yeah, on. Yeah, I got it. I see what you're working on, Danielle. I'll make sure. Okay. I'm, yeah, and it's I'm all in there. what we're talking about, and I can start putting lumens and like guidelines awesome. uh, and stuff pertaining to each zone together. Thank you, Danielle. Yeah, that's so I'll I'll include in the meeting minutes for this anyway, just our our notional determination here. Again, this is a working meeting, so it's not something we voted on, but it's definitely di directionally where we're going to go. Um, and then since you're leaving, just, you know, keep plugging. I, I think really next step for some of this is, is use case impact communication, meaning we need to tell the railroad what the implications going to be. We need to tell a hotel what the implications going to be. We need to yeah. tell a gas station. We need to tell, um, you know, we need to know what the street light implication is. These are like real world cases now. We're getting to the meat because once we have the definition, we can go and and just just communicate it. So you know, whatever you need to do. Energy to have to come to us and at, not us, but I guess the commission or the city and ask what's appropriate and not put in like 3,000 lumen street lights that just like blow you away. <laughs> right. So. Right. And I, I think, I think we'll be there though. Like, I think it's, it's just a question of what, like, what's the, you know, what are all the, all the use cases so that we have, we, we basically know what we're talking about. Um, so, whatever the minimum is to get the to get the draft language More to a organized. point that we can answer those questions that's that's what i think that's the most important thing to focus on right now okay that sounds good i'm sure lexi and i will get together this week and, and figure it out no we'll probably next week this week including the next seven days lexi <laughs> So. Uh, yeah, push it back to the 22nd because my family's coming next week and my test is on the 21st. So okay. we'll figure it out. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for your time. Sorry, I gotta go. Yeah, thanks, Danielle. I'll talk um, to you later. Yeah. Going goodbye. <laughs> hey, that's right. Bill, um, we can't see you, but can you see the screen? That's, mo that's most important. Yes. Yes, I can. Do you have any, uh, just, yeah, I know you kind of jumped in like right in the middle of all the conversation. Do you have anything though you wanted to 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 add or bring up or that percolated for you? Well, I I think uh, some some of the things looking up some of the um, sites where the material was obtained simply for the public, uh, and I'm on the education side here. This is what I'm trying to do is to say simply don't use lights brighter than you need. I mean, it's a simple statement. Yeah. Uh, and it leaves it to their discretion to a certain extent. But if you get them thinking about it at least, um, and don't use lights when they aren't needed, um, all the time I see street lights on, I see house lights on, you know, uh, porch lights in the daytime. And people forget. I, and shielding lights, directing them down. I mean, just mentioning those simple things to people to start getting them thinking about it. Uh, this, what you're doing now, I did come in in the middle of, and um, it is complicated. Um, I don't know how easy it's going to be to sell this, because uh, the word zone to some people is a uh, Finding word, <laughs> but um, I'm trying to figure out what you know. Moving back and what you've talked about already, I'm trying to move back and, and understand what you're doing here. So these city zones were determined in 2014. Is that correct? Yeah, that's the map that I have. That's the late. That was the latest as of 2014. There have actually been a few changes, but not a ton. So it's. It's relatively current in terms of making our directional determinations on light mapping lighting zone to 
city zones, right? It's, uh, it's good enough, I'll say that, to look at for this exercise. So now what you're doing is um, trying to determine if these zones match what we're trying to get done. Is that what you're trying to do here? Yeah, because the dark sky, like the, you know, the Montana dark sky um, or the international dark uh, sky. IDA. Yeah, yeah IDA. They, um, they have re a, a, a recommended approach, which they say they has had a lot of success where you you create lighting zones that match sort of the use so that you can be, because the, the challenge that comes up is if you don't create lighting zones, then you have to have one um, regulation that is applied to the entire city, which you know, doesn't apply, it just applies so differently between like residential areas that really don't need a lot of street light lighting versus like downtown, which does need that uh, on a regular basis. And, and so their recommendation is to, is, is to essentially treat the different use areas in your city as, as different lighting zones that have different guidelines and restrictions. And so, uh, and that that's what they they sort of light up that's and this is what Danielle pasted into our into this working document that's under the lighting um, folder uh, which is just fr from their recommendations sort of what uh, how to define some of these lighting zones and then what the what the intent is for those and then and then once you have your zones defined then you can then you can make some regulatory statements about how many you know how many lumens are allowed for a certain light or not right um, so so it's just a very convenient and efficient way to according to them to write this and so the the way forward is probably as we've done here to to try to map lighting zones to zones the zoning in our in our town which already exists right yeah. I mean all, everything's already zoned and it's already got its own set of restrictions and everything uh -huh. and then to just just to map those lighting zones to those zones and then the where where we landed here is though is is that well because of the way our specific town is zoned we kind of have a, a broad brush when we use the highway commercial or when we use industrial. And in those cases, um, uh, there, there, it may be appropriate to, to give them a special overlay for LZ3, which is a more permissive amount of light. But crucially, and this is what makes this regulation more sustainable going forward, Crucially, if we map these lighting zones to zones, then anytime the zoning commission or the city or the city commission decides to rezone something, the lighting zone just by default follows. So we don't have to keep, or if we add town, which is something that the growth policy is looking at right now, like like actually annexing areas of the county, then, then those will get zoned normally and they'll already and automatically have a lighting zone attached to them um, because of this mapping. Okay, so I, yeah, I, I understand what you said thus far uh, for the most part. Um, but it, it is going to take on anyone's part who is trying to figure this out some time and explanation like the, the one you just gave 
which will fit for some people. Basically, in summary then, you're tying your lighting zones to your city zoning map that's already developed. Is yep. that right? Okay, and any changes or any new additions would fit into the scheme uh, the way in which the original determination was made. Yeah, you said it incredibly better than I did. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Well, maybe, I don't know. Don't ask me to repeat it, though. <laughs> well, good news is this is being recorded, so I guess we could just... Uh, we'll okay, just... well, then it is, re yeah, it's repeatable then, yes. <laughs> okay, thank you for bringing me up to date on this uh, sort of a Picasso-looking painting. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. So I, I think that this is a good, I think this is a good output for our, for our meeting for the day. I would actually like to suggest that we identify what our next steps and next actions are. And then we just, and then we just go, you know, we break and try to reconvene with another working meeting. Bill, you, you did miss my apology. It's just an apology that I've taken a step back in the last month or so and I've become a little unresponsive and everything and that it's just um we I all have, have to a certain extent so yeah I just I just wanted to, to call it out because I'm very excited about what we're doing on this on this team and I didn't want anybody to misconstrue it as me being you know less committed to this because it's awesome. It's fun. Um, well and yeah. I really value what we're doing. So that that's all. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. Okay. Um, that's fine. I'm sorry that, you know, we're all under a little unusual stress trying to figure out our next move to the grocery store, so to speak. But, <laughs> yeah. That's right. So so maybe we can define some next actions and then break and then and then maybe talk about reconvening and um in a couple of weeks. Uh, Lexi, can I let you speak for you and Danielle on, on when you think we could uh, we could go through sort of the, the, the next step of the of the uh, language? Yeah, I think um, I have a couple things to say. Yeah. Um, I don't think that getting the lumens and foot candles will be particularly challenging. I think that we need help um, or like a partner in the zoning to do how the logistical part of how we'll make this happen. Um, but I really want to discuss like our public outreach and particularly the poll. I, I would like everyone in the group to take a look at it and provide feedback um and then also provide ideas on how we're gonna spread it i mean jonathan said he could but like technically i i didn't hear him say that i mean it was he said that she said that he said and i don't know how, how does how do we get yeah I, no, I, no 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 that, there was one degree of separation there right and and i i also talked yeah. to jonathan he is committed to the outreach plan that we put together it sounds like your specific request is that most crucially, Jonathan provides feedback on that outreach uh, recommendation. And then Amy is really, you know, with, with the document that she's put together, she's really the outreach, I, I'd say, helping, helping steer the outreach ship. So what I would recommend is in, in order to, because that's sort of two, we have parallel paths going. We have the, we have the, the. Well, I see them as like different. I see ours as a poll that we take before we finish, and hers is how to educate them on the stuff that we did when it's done and it's going to be put out. I think, like, when Danielle and I talked, we thought we needed more input and we wanted to figure out what the public actually cared about and what was important to them as we're creating it not to like edit it later but like what do they think are 
special concerns. Like, are they really worried about Main Street, like you said, or Albertsons, you know? Well, why don't we review that now? Is that okay? Yeah. Because if that's really what we need, I, there's, we're going to have to do it as a group. We can't trade emails. Yeah, we've come up with some great stuff and like great ideas. And I feel like we're too close to being done before we need public to input and make sure that it accommodates their needs. Especially when we talk about these zoning things, maybe no one thinks that um, Albertson deserves to be in R3. You know what I mean? Like maybe they don't agree with us. Um, I feel like we could use the growth policies survey things they've been sending out as a bit of a template as far as how to do it, how to actually do it. Yeah. Um, how to publicly survey people? Yeah. Or, I mean, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Um, their last one was very specific to different parts of the city which is kind of some of your questions are um, asking that. Like, if I just got one in mm -hmm. the past few weeks. It was like, in quadrant one, how do you feel about growth? And in quadrant two, how do you feel about growth? So ask the same questions for each mm -hmm. thing. So that's an idea of a yeah, direct yeah. Um, mm -hmm. um, Totally. I thought your questions were really great. Um, I think we may need an introduction to it to explain one, what dark sky is, and then also like maybe take a bit of the thing I wrote just to say um, why this is an issue. I don't think, we, I don't mm -hmm. know like, the whole thing or whatever, but just to say like, these are the things that- Yeah, why we're working on this, why it's important to the city conservation board. Yeah, I'm with you. I, 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 I didn't I even mean, know that all three, of the so um, there's going to be a lot of people out there who don't know anything about it, was my point. Yeah. Yeah, they don't even know, they don't even know why this is important. I think, um, I think you nailed it, Amy. People, uh, unfortunately, if you want to get actual valid feedback, you usually have to give some kind of background, um, but you got it. But, you know, you're right. We have to be extremely quick about it. Um, yeah. there, are, there are, so, so Lexi, I think your request is uh, just, sorry, the, but the request is to, which is a good one, is that you, you want to see, based on these questions, these are good questions, by the way, um, I, I mean, some of them, so, a lot of them we got, you know, like this one, we got to be careful about yes, no questions is if they just say yes, then. You don't have it open on your screen. Oh, you can't see it? No. Sorry, guys. I assumed you could see it. My fault. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we made these like a month ago or three weeks ago or something. And there is probably too many. And I, like, so I definitely agree. Like we should add some text and then probably take out some because this is asking a lot. I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm willing to work on this a little bit if because I feel like Lexi, you and Daniel have taken on a lot. Um, so yeah, thanks. I'd be happy to great. take this and not get just kind of refine it a bit. Um, so it's in okay. a format that where we can take it to some sort of polling. I, I really like yeah. that. Add the background and get it like actually ready to be put up. Okay. Amy, that's 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 incredibly generous of you. I think that would be great. Also, just from a from a sunshine law perspective, every time we all have to look at something, it needs to like we all have to get together to do it. Um, but if say you and Bill. And Jonathan uh, got together. Oh shoot, that's a quorum. 
We're can, down to two. Can we just, can we do, I'm not, I guess I don't follow all the rules of this. I still am confused. Can I just can you work vote on, on my that's in the Google Drive and then like I do my part and then maybe like Bill could jump in and give his yeah, comments. No. Like, can we do it that way? No, we can't. Oh, okay. That's, that's what, no, that, that's what any logical, non-insane process would be. Um, but unfortunately, any time that we are adding information and then, and then going back and forth and that sort of thing, that's deliberation. So if you and Bill were working on it together and you, and none of the other board members provided comments or input until the next board meeting, then that would be okay. Oh, okay. If, 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 uh, if you and, uh, so, so the point is that, um, now that McRae is not, uh, a board member and we don't, I, we don't have the other board member confirmed, we're in a five board member situation. So any collaboration with three board members as a quorum, uh, which means that it has to be done with full public inspection during a public meeting, which means at least for right now, until we add another board member to go back to, up to six, we, we, we can only have two of us collaborating at any given time that, that isn't in an official meeting. And that includes the completely sane thing, which is online using, you know, just going back and forth with notes and edits and stuff like that. But if I just take what they've made and I just kind of like reformat and add some stuff and then we don't talk about it, is that fine? Yeah. Okay. Hundred percent. Yes. Okay. Because I mean, that's pretty. That's what I was basically saying. Yeah, Lexi. Yeah. Can Amy make it better? And then can I propose that we, that you guys vote on it next meeting? Like, yes, can go to public. Yeah. Yeah. That that. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. That's absolutely how we should do it. So, so consider fine. Lexi. Consider this out of your possession and or actually Lexi you're not on the board yes. you can do whatever you want right you can help <laughs> no. in any way. I was like, yeah. oh no we did it wrong before and then I was like oh but Lexi's not technically right. on the board so I don't think I did anything wrong and actually and actually because McCray's here I'm just gonna say McCray if you want to be if you want to keep contributing you know uh, <laughs> you could be part of a review of this thing as well which would be I think really helpful actually um, yeah I mean, specifically, like, you know, begging, begging off some of your time to say, hey, will you at least, you know, at, just, just make sure that this reads well, right? That kind of thing. I mean, Amy, you can lean on McCray Ask too. Ask sort of questions and like have enough. And say that again, covers Lexi. every possible part. I was saying ask the right questions and make sure it like covers every part of the town you could think of. Like what Amy was saying, like when it asked about quadrants, like make sure we're asking about every place that someone could be concerned about, I guess. Make sure that I know that we all know where people are unhappy in the whole town. So then, and, and you know, our, our ultimate kind of ace in the hole is Jonathan for this stuff as an editor. Um, mm -hmm. But I would say let's, let's, save, let's save Jonathan for when we're doing this, you know, we're blessing it and saying, yay, let's go and do it. Um, and that way, Bill, with your, you know, with your communication background, I think, I think you having, uh, uh, you know, 
providing a lot of input to Amy would be pretty important. So my suggestion is that you, Amy, you go and do this first take on taking Lexi's document and turning it into essentially what's a, what would be a survey. Then email it to Bill and ask him for, for edits. Okay. And as long as it's two board members, you're okay. Also ask Lexi and McRae, but don't, but this is important. Don't copy me or Danielle on it, right? So we and can't send it over the group. You can, you, you can as an FYI. That's true. You okay, can. and just and then I could just write in there, Michael and Danielle do not. Call yeah, them. Or, or yeah, or we should know better at this point, honestly. That like we we can't provide feedback because because that constitutes deliberation, and that not only even though it's in our public group, that still needs to be something that's discussed in front of the public with the public given an opportunity to jump okay. in at the moment, right? All right, I think I got it. I know. Many, it wrong, how, just ignore my emails. <laughs> how many pages, Amy, how many pages is this document? Because I haven't seen it before. Oh, well, it's just one right now, but okay. if you find it and I add any like images, it could be quite a bit longer. Now, how do, how do I get Bill, this in your, I'll just email. In your email, I sent an email. You're going to email it to I me. sent an email like, Unfortunately, I can't. My my printer's out right now. I'm not going to get a new one until next week. Oh well, that's okay. You can just wait till I email you again. Okay. With it. All right. And then the other thing is, we were talking about the next meeting and whether it's going to be a working meeting or what. So we need to determine that too, don't we? Well, if you're going to vote, isn't it not a working meeting? Right. No, I it's. Vote on I this. Think I think it's not a working meeting, but we've had a couple of working meetings. So I think we we can have an off cycle board meeting where we actually vote, just has to be properly noticed. I'll send a, I'll send a, a, a doodle around. Okay, yeah, Michael, to your point, what you asked earlier is when you thought um, Danielle and I could finish. Yep. Um, I think that Maybe we can meet next weekend, not the one that's going to happen, but the one after. That. If not, it won't be until two weeks from now that we can meet again. Okay. So, give me, give me a suggested take date. That what you will. Do you have a suggested date, Lexi? Maybe like the the twenty ninth, Wednesday, the twenty ninth. Okay. That's the earliest? I don't know. This is what I got. That's fine. I, I don't know. Wait, well, you no, you started off by saying two dates. So it's just making sure that was the one that you were uh, with that. If so, that's that's but that's your preferred day. Is that is that a Wednesday or is that a Saturday? That's my proposal. I just not necessarily preferred. I don't know. <laughs> I don't are have you, anything going on, so I'm good. Are you, are you saying that you have other, like, other responsibilities and things in your life besides this specific thing that we're working on here? I mean, I usually don't, but for this small, rare occasion, I do. All right, I'll send out a, a, a tentative recommendation is July 29th meeting. I don't even know what date that is or like. It's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. I, yeah. All right. Wednesday. Same time. Same bat, same bat time. Okay. Okay. So, so Amy, you're going to send an email to this to me in an email. Yeah. After I, work on it a little bit, then I'll send sure. it to you. So maybe sure. give me a week or two. Sure. And and then um okay. And then I'll I'll do some editing on that or try to do some editing on it with what we background we did today. 
and uh, yep. then we'll have that ready or something ready then for the for the uh, 29th, which and is the next it, day. Right, that's great, Bill. And send it, uh, Amy, send it to when you're ready with that. Send no, it to Ray as can, well. Okay. I think oh. you can vote to hand it to Jonathan and he. Oh, we lost Lexi, you. Lexi, okay. you're, you're breaking up again. And then give it to whatever, who cares? <laughs> I'll just send an email to everyone <laughs> and then y'all get it. Yeah, that's great. You know the rule. You know the rules now. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Send it. Send it to the message board. Yeah. It'll it'll work out. Yeah. Um. Okay. I I we are at six fifty six. I uh, I suggest that we that we end the meeting. Does anybody have any? Uh, so I we re recap. Uh, continued language uh, development for Lexi and Danielle this month until our next meeting. Amy's gonna work on this uh, first communication stab for the for the the survey and circulate it. Um, and just ask Jonathan and Danielle and I to not comment on it until we see it again. Uh, and then I am going to go and look at zoning uh, overlay, basically the mechanics of the of the regulation to see if this thing that we've envisioned, the zoning overlay through the zoning commission, is the is the proper way to implement this. And we will move this project along and this is fun we're actually making real progress okay may i may i ask a question yeah is it okay for me to correspond with amy over the telephone about this definitely y'all are okay. yeah y'all are amy, if i have a question or something to, to ask you on the basis of um what you send me yeah that sounds great can you give me the your number yeah i'll um I'll email it to you. Oh, okay. That's or unless fine. you want to write it down. Oh, no, I don't want the public to know my phone number. Yeah, don't, don't put it oh, well, on. that's fine. That's fine. I have no problem with that. I, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, Y'all are rock stars. Happy Wednesday. Yeah. Thank you so much. Anybody, uh, anybody uh, have anything else before we break? Because I'm ready. Let's go. Nope. All right. All right. Um, meeting is adjourned. All right.